Hello, I'm Inya Zalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be talking about how to get fake depth of field in Adobe After Effects. I must say that if you have the option to do depth of field in camera, it's easier to do it in camera because you will have to do some rotoscoping in After Effects or green screen. So we will be looking at both of these options, um, but that also allows you to control the background and the actor separately. So if you want to darken the background or brighten it up the subject, uh, you can do that separately as well. So it's kind of the same technique that we're going to do. So let's open up After Effects and see how to get this effect. All right, here we are in Adobe After Effects and we'll take a look on how to fake depth of field. So I have three files imported right here, which you can download with the link in the description so you can follow along with the same footage. We'll have two versions um, of this effect. We'll do some rotoscoping and we'll use the green screen technique. Uh, so I will import my footage 01 right here. Right here I will be taking a look on how to actually rotoscope myself out and then blur the background. Uh, so what you can do is actually click on your layer, duplicate it, so go to edit, duplicate, and right here you have a tool rotoscope and this is your roto brush, it's actually really powerful, you can do some really cool things with that. So if you click on that and hover over your image you're not going to see anything. You will have to double click on your layer right here to actually make it, um, solo it in a layer tab right here and what you have to do then is just draw your silhouette like so and then you will see that you will have some mistakes you will have to zoom in um, and then hold alt to remove parts right here we'll have to remove this part and we'll have to add this part again remove this part a little bit more well, actually I press space and then hold alt and just go and do everything like so I'm holding space to actually um, yeah move around here I'm going to delete this part and there we go it's also really important to have your first frame as good as you can because the first frame is going to be the most important one. Now if you go and one frame forward, it's going to automatically calculate uh, how it should look so. We can do this frame per frame but right, right here you can see that it's sometimes making some mistakes and you can hold all and then remove this part and then just zoom out again see if everything is okay and then move one frame and do this frame per frame. I won't be going through this. Um, to be completely honest, I really hate uh, rotoscoping. A lot of people actually love it too, uh, so they have some time to actually listen to some audiobooks or whatever. I like to spend my time on another in another way, but yeah, I'm not here to judge. Right here, if we're going to scrub uh, further into time, you're going to see that it's going to calculate and now it's going to calculate all the frames uh, well, all the frames that comes before the, the time scrubber right here. I won't be going through all of the frames. Uh, you should actually go and check each frame individually. Um, but right here you also see this bar and this is the place that it's actually going to calculate at. So once we actually exceed this bar, we're going to see that our rotoscope is finished. Uh, so we'll actually have to extend this all the way till the end and there we go. So now it's still going to calculate right over here as well. We do see some mistakes over here, for me it doesn't really matter that much right now, but you should do this perfectly. And once you're done with your entire rotoscope, you can click on this button, which freezes your rotoscope. After freezing, you can do some final adjustments and that's why you should freeze it. Freezing also stops the calculation and otherwise you will always have new calculations uh, when going to a particular frame. Okay, so once you have done that, go back to your composition and now if we're going to uh, uncheck our background layer, you're going to see that you're cut out like so. Of course this doesn't look as good as, as it can be, um, but let's go to the first frame and this looks okay. Um, the rotoscope brush, uh, the roto brush doesn't work well with hair, um, that's, uh, well, the roto brush is used for like rough rotoscopes if you have to do something quickly. Um, real rotoscoping is another kind of skill set, but if you want to key out like hair, it's easier to just uh, take a green screen and do it that way. Okay, so uh, what I will do here is increase my feather to something like 25, and I will shift edge myself to something like minus 20, and the contrast of 60. And there we go, this looks fine. I will um, check my background again. And now we do have a sharp background, we want to blur this out. So what we will do is go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and select our camera Lens Blur. Right here I'm going to enter a value of 25, I'm not going 
to exaggerate on this value because um, we still have a medium kind of shot and medium kind of shots are in blurred all the way so uh, 25 is like a little bit of a max you can go uh, maybe even 15 could work well it doesn't need to be exaggerated then I'm also going to toggle on the repeat edge pixels so my edges get solved right here but we still have another problem we can see right here that we have blur of our background layer and that's because we don't have a clean plate if you have the option um, to actually record the background as well uh, without me being on there that would be easier but I did this on purpose to show you how to work around it if you can not have the clean plate uh, so right here we'll toggle on my footage and we'll press S on the keyboard and right here you can just uh, increase your scale a little bit and then just readjust on top of yourself and that's going to solve it a little bit uh, we can go a little bit higher if you want to and there we go and now uh, we're going to see that um, it's of course you're going to be bigger um, but yeah that doesn't really matter that much if we're going to see this frame it actually looks pretty good um, the rotoscoping went pretty well and we have now a blurred background which looks a lot better the reason why we use depth of field is uh, for those that don't know why to use depth of field the reason why we use it is one it makes your image more cinematic two it gives you a sense of depth and three uh, it actually takes the attention of your audience towards the subject so you're actually going to um, draw your audience towards yeah the thing you want to put in focus the, the thing you want to show so you can use it in multiple ways um, but if you have the chance to actually record depth of field in real life it's always better if you want more filmmaking tips I would definitely encourage you to check out our six pro filmmaking tips on how to improve your skill set so I will add a card to this video so you can go and check that out and let's continue with our next footage so right here I have footage 02 I will drag this into a new composition and I also have the background here so this is what I mean with a clean plate um, this is our background without our actor in frame so if I'm going to check this on I have some green screen here but the cool thing about this is this is shot in the exact same location so I had like a flip open green screen uh, from Frotoflex I actually reviewed it a while back uh, you can go and check that out if you're interested um, but right here I have my green screen but the lighting is exactly the same as in this scene because it's shot at the exact same spot Actually, right here, I already have some depth of field, as you can see. That's because I don't have a lens that doesn't have depth of field if I zoom in all the way, uh, like so. Um, but yeah, you can also increase your depth of field. Even if you have depth of field, but you want more depth of field, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go over the technique. So basically what we're going to do here is just remove our green screen. Um, if you want tips on green screens, I also have a bunch of videos on that, on how to record against a green screen or how to remove a green screen. So go to keying, key light, and we're going to click on this color and just pick our green color go to the screen mat set this to 15 85 minus 5 and maybe some well minus 5 something like 2 and there we go so uh, we have our solve and this looks pretty good actually so we have our green screen removed and now what we can do with the background is click on the background go to effects blur and sharpen and apply again the camera lens blur and right here we're going to increase this like to 20 or actually 75 just exaggerate here we're zoomed in very well uh, so we can go and extend that value so there we have it we have more depth of field uh, which does look cinematic of course it's going to look a lot better if you have like lights in the background uh, you can do some really cool things with that as well and now let's uh, add an adjustment layer to do some final color grading on top of everything to actually combine the two together so uh, click on your adjustment layer go to effects color correction curves and maybe we we'll want to add some kind of contrast here oh actually for the RGB and there we go What you can do as well if you actually uh, have a separate background is click on the background, go to effects and curves for example and right here we can actually darken our background. Uh, the reason why you should do this or why you would do this is to actually again draw the attention to your well to your subject, uh, subject or yeah just to um, separate the two so to actually give another sense of depth and they do that a lot with lighting and scenes like the background is a little less than the actor is and that way you get a sense of depth so you can do that as well you can now go and tweak the background separately and the actor separately so if we want to brighten up our face uh, we can increase that right here 
Uh, so you can also add like more contrast. Oh, why is it always taking the red here? Uh, so you can add more contrast to the face. Uh, that's why I would do that. You can go back to the adjustment layer effect, uh, blur and sharpen, add an unsharp mask, add something like 150, duplicate the mask. Set this to 25, 25, and this is going to add some popping effect to our scene. Of course, you can see that my shot isn't perfectly sharp, and this is because I'm filming myself and I'm actually thinking of where I will be standing, so it's quite hard to actually get that right every single time. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go to our footage one and actually duplicate our adjustment layer. So go to Edit, Copy, and go to Footage 01 here, Edit, Paste, and there we have it. We also have some color grading and this is going to combine it to a little bit better together. Again, we can click on our footage 01. Maybe you want to add a vignette, but just to the background. You can apply an adjustment layer below your actor, go for effect curves, lower the brightness of the background. And again, you can see that it is already looking like more cinematic just because your the background is a little bit darker. You can also add contrast in the back. Well, contrast, I wouldn't suggest that um, because it's going to look uh, different from your footage. Okay, so right here we have um, it darkened up and now what we can do is pick our lips tool, double click on it and subtract our mask right here. Press F on the keyboard and increase our mask, well our feather. And now we have a vignette but it's not going to affect our actor because if we're going to put this on top you're going to see that everything here gets dark. We don't want that, we just want to apply it to our background and now we can uh, Add some vignette there, and this and this does look a lot better than our original shot. Let's see our original uh, shot right here. This is what we had. And this is what we have now. So it does look a lot better. You can do some really cool things in post. You can use this in a lot of other ways that I can't even imagine. And if you come up with something cool, definitely put a link to it in the comments below so I can go and check out what you made. I would love to see what you can come up with. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. See you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>